All right, I'm really excited to uh, talk with you today to show you what's in this big red binder. Um, first, we're gonna be uh, talking about a lot of different seeds. This is how I store my seed packets. Now, this is a big binder. There's a lot of seed packets in there. And if you buy seeds, you know what I'm talking about, this vortex that you just can't stop buying seeds. But I can tell you that in uh, my area where my garden gr uh, grow stuff is, is a massive amount of seeds that I personally save. And I actually replant mostly from the seeds that I save. Um, and so this is just some extra I like to have uh, on a backup in case I accidentally cross pollinate my seeds or I actually plant them or they get dumped over, some mouse steals them. Who knows, right? So I like to have a backup, but I'm always trying new stuff each year. So um, so we're just, uh, so this is kind of my backup of my binder here that I have. This is just photo albums, photo album sheet papers or whatever, like clear plastic things. And I just put the seeds into them. Uh, people have different types of stores. I've seen like photo boxes and stuff. I didn't want to um, spend extra money and I had this already. So I thought, well, let's just use this. They slide out, but you know what? Sometimes I don't want to invest in other things and I want to use what I have on hand. That's the part about being frugal. So, but let's do a quick thing about seed saving. I absolutely love seed saving because the love of a garden starts with a single seed, right? And these little tiny seeds are so small and they sprout into something so large that feeds an abundance of things. And that fruit um, then provides more seeds in that fruit. And then you save those seeds and then you can plant more. So a lot of times once you buy seeds, you don't have to buy any more. I just like to have it. I just have an addiction. I mean, that's just frankly what it is. So, I mean, and some of you will get me on that. But seed saving is fabulous. I have a course on the seed saving that um, has videos and a workbook that shows exactly um, how to seed save a lot of different seeds and the, um, the importance on it. Now, uh, the importance of seeds in general to buy heirloom seeds. I have talked about this before. I have some videos that I'll link down below for you guys just, um, and some blog posts about um, different um, types of seeds that you are able to get out there. I'm going to say that you need to have heirloom seeds because you can actually seed save from those. Those other ones that are not marked heirloom, they are genetically modified and made with animal DNA and plant DNA um, and other things that I'm not even sure about. So they're a Franken seed in my mind. And you can't seed save from there. That's not what God meant for us to do. He didn't mean it for be a once and done. No, he, it's fruitful, right? It keeps going. It's continual. It's replenishing. It's a circle of life. That's what he intended. So buy heirloom seeds. And if you want to read more, go ahead and click down below. But now let's dive into the old seeds, right? So I get most of my seeds from uh, Baker Creek, which is rareseeds.com. This year, I am trying seeds from M.I. Gardener. They're in Michigan. They're actually in a place I used to work. Well, I didn't work for him, but I worked in St. Clair, Michigan um, at a salt uh, company long, 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 long ago in my corporate days. But now I'm a homesteader. Big difference. And I love this world much better. But anyway, so I thought, well, I'm going to give him uh, a try this year on the M.I. Gardener. The seed packs are two bucks. You spend 20 bucks, you get free shipping. They are heirloom seeds. Um, I have I have good faith that they are going to uh, work out. I know a lot of different people um, plant with them. So I'm looking really um, excited for this year's for this thing. So um, I kind of put them sort of in order. I'm not really um, that in order type of a person. But I thought, let's go through them. So this year I'm going to be trying from M.I. Gardener Artichoke. And I have no idea if it's going to work out. But we're going to try it anyways. So this is one of my fun things that we're going to go ahead and try out. Um, why not? I like spinach and artichoke dip. <laughs> Oh, yeah, might as well grow my own artichokes, right? All right, um, and then we have broccoli, um, and I get these ones from Rare Seeds, and I do seed save from broccoli, too. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but um, I, I really like this Waltham 29. That seems to work really good. Nice heads like this. Um, trick about um, broccoli is once you cut that main first head that you get, and don't cut down the plant or rip it out, it will send off a multitude of shoots for the rest, for the remaining of the year that you will get perfect broccoli dipping size ones and you get plenty of meals from that. So, so don't rip them out. Key for that, okay? Um, the next one is, um, ooh, the beets. Um, I get these beets from, um, and I'm not talking about these kind of beets. I get beets from High Mowing Organic Seeds. They have a really high shipping policy, so if you can pick them up at a store, that is awesome. But they work really good. I like the Chioga beet. They have a beautiful pink and white like uh, bullseye thing that's really nice um, for my beans I do a lot of dry beans and I do a lot of um, purple my famous purple 
potted pole beans. I need some more coffee, y'all. Um, that, uh, that I love, and they are pole beans, so they grow up. So the more space you give them, um, they, they'll, they'll give you more per seed, which is fabulous. And they taste really good. They're stringless. Um, they're just beautiful, too, because they're purple. So um, and a lot of the uh, dry beans that I like to do are pinto beans, so because I make my own refried beans. Um, this year, I am trying um, something called a cattle, Jacob's cattle bean. Um, so they kind of look like this. They look pretty. I thought I would just give them a try, you know, because they're purple and white, so why not? So that's what I'm going to do. I'm also going to try cantaloupe. It, this one is from MI Gardener as well. Um, Minnesota Midget Cantaloupe. Um, so I'm just... You know, why not? Why try it? Or why not try it, right? I do dragon tongue beans from um, Baker Creek, too. They're really pretty. They're not my favorite. I don't know why not, but um, maybe because I already have so many purple beans, and those are just like the best of the best, so I just kind of stick with those. Um, I'm going to try navy beans this year, too, because, again, I said I do a lot of dry beans, and they are a lot of work, but they are really, um, they just scream uh, food security to me. So I'm like, yes, dry beans. Keep everything I can do by stuff. I'm going to do it, right? The God has given me um, lots of space. Might as well plant it. So I'm going to try navy beans this year for another dry bean. I have um, a couple different types of carrots that I really like. Um, one of my favorite is Nantes, N-A-N-T-E-S. I get those from a couple different places. Sometimes Rare Seeds had it, and I don't think they have it anymore, so now i got to get it from somewhere else, but um, those are really good. Little finger carrots, those are cute, right? Those are um, long little finger carrots. Those are really nice, um, quick carrots that you can go ahead and just pop out of the garden and, you know, eat those yourself. Oh, it looks like so. Um, so the Nantes, the last ones I got was from Burpee. So those are Burpee heirloom seeds. Make sure they're heirloom. I also like to do a lot of cauliflower. And the cauliflower I like to do is, um, oh, let's see, let's pull these out. So here is, oh, it's amazing cauliflower. Literally, it's called amazing cauliflower. It's a nice white cauliflower I really like. And then I also do a purple cauliflower that is called purple of Sicily. Because it's purple, I just kind of have that theme going on. So I like that. The cabbage that I like to do is golden acre cabbage. That's another high mowing one. A um, couple different cucumbers. I We don't eat pickles here. I'm the only one that would like them. And they're just never as crunchy as any. And you just can't get them super, super crunchy. So anyways, um, I just tend to do like the munching, the snacking cucumbers. And we will eat the stink out of them like crazy, especially my youngest one. So I like the Market More 76 cucumber and the Muncher cucumber. And, okay, so corn. Corn, um, organic or heirloom corn can be really tricky to do. It's, um, I just, or I can never pick it at the right time. But last year, um, I got from High Mowing Company, it's called Who Gets Kissed Sweet Corn. I don't know who comes up with these names. Who Gets Kissed Sweet Corn. Now, this is a open pollinated corn where you can actually seed save from it. So I saved some of the um, cobs. They have the kernels on it. Oh, um, test those and replant those. I also have more as a backup just in case. It was really good. I was able to pick it on time. I canned it and it was wonderful. So how cool is that? Um, let's see. So then I have some celery. Um, and I do a couple different kinds of celery. I will do a Chinese pink celery, which is, it's much, um, it's much thinner, but it's pretty. So I kind of do that. And then I do celery D E L N E. I'm not even sure how to say that. I apologize, but so I do that one. I really that one works really good. Um, my favorite kind of eggplant, and we love eggplant because we make eggplant parmesan with it, or uh, does really good with uh, roasted vegetables during the summer on the smoker, or you could do it in the oven. Mm -mm -mm, so good. So, anyways, the brand or the um, type of eggplant is Diamond Eggplant. It gets about this big. It's just a really, it's just a perfect size and it works really well. I'm able to pre preserve it in the eggplant parmesan and then use it all year long, which is great. Um, there is a dinosaur kale that I'm going to be trying this year, which is kind of fun because it's got the word dinosaur in it. And then I have lots of different lettuces. I am constantly trying different lettuce and trying to grow it in my my greenhouse like during the winter which you know up here in northern Michigan um, doesn't really work that well but I can push back all the um all the leaves and I can see all the little guys starting to pop up so it's going to get there which is great now it's already done I let it kind of self-seed it falls down it replants 
that's what I'm talking about. Sometimes you gotta be lazy with stuff, but it works better because nature's better than I am. All right, so a couple of the things I like is the Land is Winter and Han Henderson's Black Seated Simpson. There's Gustav's and Tennis Ball. And one of my favorite one is for Ellen Schloss. Eh, I probably butchered that one too. That one is from Baker Creek, which is rareseeds.com uh, for Ellen Schloss. I really like that. Um, and then, of course, there's different other, um, gosh, there's just so many different kinds of lettuces. Those are just really fun to just try. Um, banana peppers, I like to make those up too because I love to can those and put them with those on pizza or in wraps or anything like that. So good. Um, let's see. A couple of different um, at my gardener peppers that I'm going to try this year are YOLO Wonder. I don't know if you only live once. If that's the pepper, if that's what it means. It's a wild pepper. I don't know. There's a keystone resistant giant pepper and a purple beauty pepper. Those are all new. So we'll see how about those ones go. Um, I like to do radishes. Um, I have a watermelon radish. And then, oh, the good ones, the best ones are the early scarlet globe radish that I really like. And I'm going to, there's an accompanying blog post to this whole video too. So if you couldn't catch some of the names, I'm going to have them down below for you guys on a link that you'll be able to just go ahead and see which ones that I like and have had really great success with. Success with. Um, I really like for pie pumpkins, Jack B. Littles. Those are so cute and they're about this big and they just work really good. Um, some snap peas. I got Sugar Ann and Mammoth Melting. Those are both from High Mowing. Let's see. Um, let's see. Okay, so uh, there is a honey butternut squash that it, it, they're like small like this. So they're like, are you going to grow? But that's about as big as they get. They are sweet and they are really good. So normally I grow this butternut squash that I got from my dad's friend from years and years ago. Um, and so, and they're bigger, it's beautiful, it tastes really good, but I thought I'll try this honey, honey nut butter nut squash. And that one really works good. We're gonna try a watermelon this year too. Why not, right? Um, I usually, last year I uh, planted a bunch of cayenne peppers because I will use that as a, um, <laughs> as like an herb actually, I make it into a tincture, you can spray it and it can help stop um, bleeding. So anyways, but that's a whole thing. That's a whole nother thing. But as I grew cayenne last year. I don't need to do it again this year because I have a, a boatload and it's not like it's something you can munch on. Or can you? Um, let's see, a new uh, pepper called firework pepper. I gotta show, this one looks cool. Let's see if this one's gonna be any good, right? Look at all those cute little peppers. They're all like different colors. That looks fun. I just wanna try that. So we're gonna try that. Um, and then we've got, let's see, oh, and then we've got the tomatoes. So some of my favorite tomatoes are Bonnie Best tomatoes, Amish Paste tomatoes, and Tappy's Heritage tomato. That Tappy's Heritage tomato is one of my favorites. It is so pretty, and it always does really good. It's just like that perfect size. It's not a beef steak. I actually don't like those at all. They're full of water. They usually split, and they just don't look that pretty. Um, and I, then that you can't, you can can them, but since it's so much full of water that it just, it's kind of eh, null and void, but the, um, Tappy's hair chids, you can eat them great. They're that perfect slices for BLTs or sandwiches. And then of course they can as well. So all, but then the ones that I other can are the Bonnie's best, the Amish paste. And, um, there's one more, oh, San Marzano Lungo number two. Those do pretty good too, but my favorites are the taps. Tappy Tappies. So we're gonna try that. All right, so now, oh, I also do tomatillos. I really like doing tomatillos. Um, they are crazy overabundant, overachievers. Like, they just want to show off in the garden. Those are do really good. I make a lot of salsa verde with that. And then I use that through, I'll can that and I'll use that throughout the winter. Um, and the rest of these are herbs. So let's talk about a couple of my favorite herbs. Uh, Fever Fuel, Yarrow. Oh, let's see, calendula. Oh, I love me some calendula. It's nice stinging nettles. I had to, I could not find any in my region whatsoever, so I had to buy the seed to plant them, but a lot of times you can find them um, out there, and you will know that because they will sting you with these little hairs, and you will feel it. Um, holy basil, you know, I love holy basil, uh, basil, aka Tulsa, Tulsi, Tulsa, I'm not from Oklahoma, Tulsi. Um, let's see what other some things we got here. Oh, these are just some um, flowers that I'm going to try. Got something called bachelor's buttons for fun. There's a moonflower that's really pretty that only literally blooms when it, at nighttime. And it's a big white flower. It's just so pretty. I thought, 
I gotta try to eat some of these things, right? I can't be all business grown and preserving food. I gotta have some fun with it too. And of course you got your rosemary and your dill and stuff like that. And then, um, uh, cilantro, I love me some cilantro. Cilantro is great. And then um, I guess we're at the end of zucchini. So uh, I have some zucchini that is seed saved. And then this one, this one last packet here is a Ford hook zucchini. So I will do that one. I think there's there's one other one. I wish I could think of it. So I'll, I'll have to look at that up and put that on the on the blog post that I have below. But seed review as quick as I could possibly speak. You'll hear, read all my favorites down below. Um, and then of course you can go through the seed saving guide or join my gardening um, club and stuff like that. So um, I'll see you at the next video.